Welcome to USA News Today. Please subscribe and check notification box to get all breaking news alert and latest updates on hot cases. Our vision News Today. More Central American migrants take shelter in churches, recalling 1980s sanctuary movement. Honduran migrant Vicky Chavez with her daughter Isabella on May 31, 2018 in the First Unitarian Church in Salt Lake City, where she sought protection from deportation in late 2017. The ongoing threat of mass immigration raises terrifying immigrant communities across the United States. Many of those targeted in these raids are Central Americans who came to the United States illegally, came legally but overstayed their visas or whose asylum requests were not granted. Refugees from these violence-torn countries live in fear of being sent back home to one of the world's most dangerous regions. Since 2012, an estimated 1.5 million people have come to the United States fleeing gang violence and state repression in El Salvador, Honduras and Guatemala. Just over 330,000 have applied for asylum, according to United Nations data. On average, about 75% of asylum claims from this population are denied. Though migrants may appeal these decisions, they may still be deported during the end stages of the legal process. To avoid arrest, thousands of Central Americans have taken shelter in churches, which U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement considers sensitive locations where officers should be hesitant to make arrests. Asylum Denied Central Americans facing deportation have long sought protection in houses of worship. As I write in my new book on the Sanctuary Movement in Los Angeles, hundreds of thousands of people came to the U.S. seeking political asylum in the 1980s due to civil wars in El Salvador and Guatemala. Under U.S. refugee laws, a political asylee has the right to stay in the United States if they would be tortured, killed or both back home. While many civil rights lawyers and immigration advocates in the 1980s felt this standard clearly applied to the Central Americans, acknowledging their fears of persecution would have been an implicit acknowledgement by the Reagan administration that its Central American allies were engaged in human rights abuses. Central Americans' asylum applications were largely denied. Just 5% of Salvadorans, for example, received asylum between 1980 and 1990, my research found declaring that the Central Americans were economic migrants seeking jobs that belong to U.S. citizens and must return to their country. The Reagan administration began workplace raids in the early 1980s. In response, many churches and synagogues proclaimed themselves sanctuary sites. Based on biblical, theological and historical but not legal grounds that compel religious groups to protect victims of persecution, they opened their doors to the Central American migrants. The Sanctuary Movement, as this operation came to be called, began in 1982 in Tucson, Arizona and soon spread throughout the country. By 1990 some 2,000 churches and cities had declared themselves to be havens where these immigrants, virtually all of whom were Catholic, would be protected.